What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video. So today is our third um, and probably for now our final of these three uh, reaction videos. Probably after this I've got like a more kind of vlog style video where you guys are going to follow me along um, and then probably something where we might talk a little bit about the R7 which I know a lot of you guys are looking forward to. So today uh, we are looking um, at Tony and Chelsea Northrup's channel. Now it's not a sports photography channel, um, it's a photography channel but I think a lot of you guys are going to be familiar with it i certainly knew about it before watching this video today um and it's a video that's on a topic i made a video about quite a long time ago and actually it was quite a successful video um and really i haven't come back round on the topic again for quite a long time uh, and that is back button focus so today we're going to watch their video on back button focus um i'll share with you my thoughts we'll see if their thoughts are the same as mine might be a different perspective from a sports photographer um although looking at the thumbnail i think they're gonna shoot some baseball as part of their as part of their video anyway so right let's get into this let's see how we find it let's go hi i'm tony northrup and for chapter four of my book stunning digital photography my daughter chelsea and i are out at a baseball diamond to demonstrate why you should learn to use back button focus Back button focus is a technique that stops your camera from autofocusing when you push that shutter button halfway. Normally you push the shutter button halfway, your camera autofocuses, and then when it focuses, you push it all the way to take a picture. And that's awfully convenient, especially if you don't know how to use a camera. So, so I'm going to jump straight in there. So, so yeah, that's kind of, I mean, um, that's actually, I don't know, maybe that's not the best explanation of what it is. So, so what it basically means is, yeah, so a lot of you guys will be familiar, right? M most cameras um, straight out the box. Um, the, the way you focus is you half press, the, in fact, you know what, I've got my R6 right here. Um, you would half press the shutter button. Um, and then when you fully press it, it takes the photo. Well, well, well what it does, back button technique, is basically um, enables you to use one of the buttons on the back in most cases and with the R6 is this one this af on button so that instead of auto focusing with this you're auto focusing with your thumb instead so your technique changes from auto focus with your thumb take the photo with your finger and the two aren't interlinked at all so you focus with this take the photo with this so the two aren't combined in any way it separates your focus from your shutter button so yeah right let's let's get back into it but if you separate the focusing and the picture taking it opens up a whole new world of possibilities and allows you to take pictures so much faster. And one of the best examples I wanted to use this is sports photography, but it's also terribly useful for night photography, portraits, wildlife, weddings, candid shots, just about any yeah, so I should say um, I, I use this for everything. I don't just use it for sports. Um, I learned this pretty early on in my process um, and, and I use it for everything I do. Everything from landscapes to events to portraits to sports. A lot of the benefits for me show themselves more in sports than other areas of photography. But but I love this for, for every aspect of photography because for me, the, the benefits actually aren't to do with shooting faster, as, as he mentioned. They're, they're to do with the benefits you get from having your focus separate from your shutter button that for me is the biggest benefit anything you might do back button focus can make it better so first i'm going to show you just how much better by taking a couple of shots of my daughter here now she's batting and when she's at home plate i like to use focus recompose so i can put it right at the edge of the frame and use that rule of space to leave plenty of room in front of her but when she's running down the baseline, my camera's autofocusing system needs all the help it can get to keep up with her. So in other words, when she's batting, I want to use single focusing, known as one shot for Canon cameras or AFS for just about anything else. And then when she's running, I want to use continuous focusing, AFC or uh, just AI servo on Canon cameras. And so so yeah so so um i i use ai servo for pretty much everything <laughs> we're not not pretty much everything um unless maybe i'm doing some some full-on like proper like kind of maybe white backdrop portraits or just portraits then i might use single shot focus but generally i use ai servo continuous focus um for everything and that's one of the huge benefits you get um with back button focus because you literally you can have your thumb on that focus button focusing the 
the entire time tracking something that's moving, focusing on it, focusing on it, focusing on it, then all I've got to do is use my finger bang whenever I want to take the photo. So it means that continuous focus stays totally separate from when I press the shutter button. It's not trying to refocus or anything like that because you've already got your focus locked in um, or you're already tracking with your continuous focus. And it would be a little tough to switch modes while I'm trying to take pictures because I, I don't know when she's going to hit the ball, right? But as soon as she does, I'd have to switch modes and that could take a little bit. So I'll demonstrate taking pictures without using back button focus first. So I think you're going to jump in there in case anyone's taken that as gospel. You don't you don't need to do that. You don't need to be switching between single point and uh, and continuous focus or single shot. Just leave it in continuous focus. If you're going to shoot sports, it doesn't matter if someone's stationary, moving, whatever. Just leave it in continuous focus. You don't need to worry about ever switching back and forth. Nice one, man. So there you can see I did manage to switch from single focusing to continuous focusing. Get a couple of shots before she got to first base, but I'm also really practiced with my camera. If you weren't quite so good at switching modes, it would take you even longer. But with back button focusing, I won't have to switch modes because I'll leave my camera in continuous focusing. And when I want to do the focus recompose, I just hold down the AF on button or whatever button I've assigned to use back button focus. And I'll hold it down until it focuses on her on the mound. And then I can recompose and not worry about the camera refocusing. Then when she starts running, I just... Okay, yeah, so this is quite a key one, right? So you've got the ability there, exactly like you said, to focus on something and then take your finger off the focus button and recompose. Then when you take the photo, the camera's not going to try and refocus as part of you pressing that shutter button. You focused with your thumb, you recompose wherever you want it to be, and you press the shutter. That shutter no, has, no longer has any association to your focus. So it's not going to try and refocus on something that you've now got in the center of your frame, which maybe isn't the thing that you want in focus. That, for me, is probably the biggest benefit that you get from back button focus. Just hold it down and keep the focusing point on her, because it's already in continuous focusing mode. There's no need to change modes. So let's see how many shots I get using back button focus. Great, awesome. So as you can see, there was almost no delay there. All I had to do was to put the focusing point on her and then hold down that back button focus. It took me less than a second, and that gave me 10 times more shots of her running. Yeah, so um, so I guess, I mean, look, the number of shots you can get actually it does make a difference. But that said, I mean, you could still take a lot of shots if you were using the, the shutter button because um, that doesn't stop you using continuous focus. You just have to be maybe, I guess, slightly more practice. I mean, I, I should say at this point, there are some top level sports photographers um, who don't use back button focus. I know a load of you guys watch Mark uh, Mark Curtin's channel. Um, he, he doesn't, or at least he didn't. I'm assuming he still doesn't. You know, so, so it doesn't stop you from using continuous focus which is kind of what it feels like Tony's suggesting there which isn't really true you you can still use continuous focus just fine with shutter button half depressed focused um, for me it just isn't as smooth using the two together compared to when you use it with back button focus running down the baseline so now that I've sold you on the usefulness of back button focus how do you actually get it set up and unfortunately it's different for every single camera all I can do is tell you to search for the model number of your camera and the phrase back button focus in, say, Google. So you might say Canon 70D back button focus, and you'll find somebody has nice yeah, so pretty much for, for almost any Canon camera, uh, you just go into the menu, you go along like to the right hand side of the menu options, and there's one that's like customize buttons, where you can change buttons to do all sorts. Um, in most Canon cameras, it's in there, it's really easy to um, to find. Um, I'll add a little screenshot um, right here if I can of, of where it is, but it's not that difficult to find. ...provided instructions for you. In general, it can be a one-step process or a multi-step process. Usually you have to find the setting in your camera that turns off autofocus and when you push the shutter button halfway down. Then, if your camera doesn't have a dedicated AF on button, you need to assign autofocusing to one of the buttons on 
Yeah, I should say, so So when you do it, when you customize the buttons, you have to do those two bits, right? So first of all, you get your shutter button and you remove the option for it to focus from that. So that shutter button is just your shutter release. And, and then you assign one of the back buttons to, to focus as well. So you have to take it off your shutter button and then reassign it to a back button. For pretty much all Canon cameras, it's the AF on button that you would reassign it to. On the back of the camera. Those two steps are enough to allow anybody to use back button autofocus. It's going to take some practice though. You'll need to use it for a couple of days until the muscle memory kicks in and you learn to automatically focus using that back button. And until you get to that point, you might miss a few shots. So this is a really good point. It, it will take you a while to get used to it. So if you're used to doing the other way and you've got, you've got a game tomorrow, don't change it and go try shoot your game. Change it and practice. Maybe practice on a game that, that's less important or you know a, a, a game where maybe you could try it for a, a period of the game because it does take you a while to get used to. And that's where I've seen a lot of people go wrong is they'll try it for a short period of time don't like it and give it up but you know what just fight through that first like period of time where oh it's awkward i can't get the hang of it because you will get the hang of it and and you will get all the benefits all right stick with it so i encourage you to set it up and then practice 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 if you ever need to switch back to your traditional focusing system just put that camera over in the green mode or fully automatic mode and usually the camera will override all of your existing settings if you like this video, please subscribe and click like. And for lots more instructional videos like this, check out chapter four of my book, Stunning Digital Photography, which has more than seven hours of video. You can get it at SDP Community or at Amazon. If you have any questions, please write a comment down below. Thanks. Cool. So there you go. So, um, so look, as, as always, the original video is linked in the description. So go check it out. It's actually one of their older videos. They, they have loads and loads of videos on their channel. Um, but go check out um, their video in the description below. Just to recap, I think for me, the biggest benefit of back button focus um, is the fact that it just totally disassociates your focus and your shutter button from being the same thing. It enables you to concentrate on continuous focus, tracking something, something that's still whenever you want to. And then when you're ready to take a photo, bang, you just take the photo. You can take one shot, multiple shots if you're shooting in high speed mode. It's that that for me is the benefit. It's not really to do with like the speed at which you work. It's the fact that it disassociates focus from shutter as two totally different things enabling you to recompose and and all those benefits right there so i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did do me a favor hit the like button make sure you comment below let me know what you think of these reaction videos because although we'll probably switch back to a couple of normal videos now um, i definitely will do some more reaction videos let me know in the comments below if there's anything you've seen out there that you'd like my opinion on maybe another video that you would like me to react to uh, in the meantime guys thank you very much for watching i will see you on the next video.